We have only one try. Only one try. flesh was worthy of disrespect. Now, it's far from being worthy of disrespect. Original, the original genetics, the original human descendants we be. Mm -hmm. Okay. this and that that I'm doing now and still I have to squeeze in the time to um, continue on the journey with the family online here so that way we continue what we've been continuing um, today primarily the continued reading of the destruction of black civilization by Chancellor Williams. Also, um, I want to begin first of all. I'm Abdul Wadud, aka Wapenzi, also called Questman, founder of Soul Journey of Life, the conscious black social media platform, um, Soul Journey of Life.org. Salam alaikum, shalom. Hotep, peace be with you, beloved black family. We strive to be of those intellectuals about that business. You understand? We know that in addition to, you know, strapping up physically, you know, with the arms or whatnot, and the unarmed, we also strap up intellectually. You understand? And that's where a soul journey of life comes in. Making sure that while we march, while we stand up, while we rise up, that we also rise up intellectually and come together intellectually as a united front. We want to be united mind, body, and soul. One united black family, one united black nation. You understand? That's what this is about. Keeping it real inside and out. Uh, let's see here. So, got a lot going on. Trying to help some folks out with some of the uh, 
Soul Journey of Life Matters. Hmm. I can see that uh, I'm going to have to break it, break down some more tutorials to help the family know how to um, navigate through the um, Soul Journey of Life platform. You know, when there's something new, you know, you, um, there's always, um, even though things might seem uh, easy, you know, for, you know, a designer or a maker, you know, you got to realize that, you know, when something's new to, to the family, you know, it, it's kind of like new territory, new new land to roam upon. And so, you know, we got to kind of hand walk them, show them the rope, show them the, their way around. Um, one of the things that I've, I've been uh, actively promoting today is for, you know, brothers and sisters that are involved in selling things online, selling their, you know, products online, is to set up a, uh, a vendor's account on Soul Journey of Life. And, um, you know, you'd be able to, by doing that, you'll have your own setup, your own, you know, little uh, shop space and everything. Um, setting your prices, whatever the case may be, it, it's your own element. And so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to encourage that more so that way we get more participation with businesses, with vendors, with, um, you know, different organizations in the black communities, uh, different, um, you know, learned ones amongst us, trying to gather us all together, get us all to come together and unify under, you know, the platform Soul Journey of Life. It's a challenge. Because, you know, it's hard to get us to, you know, open up to something new or something, uh, you know, breaking away from the norm that we're, that we're so comfortable with in this time and era. Okay. Let's see here. All right. I want to remind the family of the... Um, upcoming um, hearing uh, Grandmaster Jay versus the state of K Kentucky we want to keep an eye out for that keep an eye on that pay attention stay on code we also want to keep an eye on the uh, Grandmaster Jay Legal Defense Fund you know which right now the current balance is $32,797 goal to reach a million. That's the uh, Eleanor Harvey account uh, on behalf of uh, Brother Grandmaster Jay, John Fitzgerald Johnson. Um, so make sure you're, you know, pulling a few dollars every now and then when you can for that. Also, I must add, um, I must add to your wallet of uh, helping hands to um, go ahead and support Soul Journey of Life, you know, make it your home platform for social media. Um, I encourage that you can support uh, with the Cash App, the Light Dome. Um, that's the Cash App link. You can also support uh, through PayPal at, at uh, PayPal.me forward slash Soul Journey of Life, and you can also support directly on souljourneyoflife.org log into your your account there and look to the left uh, scroll down until you see um, the uh, support the support us the support the cause I'm sorry support the cause you can also uh, click the uh, the picture that you see that says support soul journey of life and you see you know this um, ancient uh, African tree, you know, with, with, with you know, villagers around the tree. Click that painting, it'll also take you to uh, where you can, you know, offer your support for Soul Journey of Life. And that helps in so many ways. It helps keep the, the, the website up. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if the provisions are, are, are good enough, it helps to, you know, get me out there and, uh, particularly support 
you know, family that we tend to forget about, you know, the, the homeless, the poor, and I'm not just talking about any homeless. I'm not just talking about like brothers and sisters in the shelters. I'm talking about those who never who never make it there. For whatever reason, you know, they still, you know, find their place sleeping behind a bush somewhere on the side of the building or, or whatnot. These are the ones that I'm talking about. And it's pretty cold out there right now, so you know we want to look out for the family wherever we are, whether it be high or whether it be low. We want to look out for the family. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, keep that in mind. So, uh, today, as I mentioned, the intention is the continued reading of the Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. So, let's head on to that. kinds of notifications going on. I got one of my sons complaining in the background. So it's a pretty, pretty, uh, you know, event-filled evening right now. Uh, let's see here. So, so you know where to follow along if you're following along. Uh, you can also download the PDF. You can even download it uh, from Soul Journey of Life. I've got the PDF there as well. Um, otherwise, put your headphones in, listen in, turn the speakers up a little bit while you listen to the reading. We're beginning on or continuing on page 310. That's chapter 13, titled The Black World at the Crossroads. That's where we will uh, begin this reading. So, you know, before I, I do that, I want to, you know, just emphasize the importance of, um, of supporting each other as a black community. You understand? You know, the movement isn't going to move itself. It's us in the movement that's moving it. And, you know... As I keep on saying, especially for us so-called God-conscious ones, we're not going to move anywhere unless we have this um, drive to move. You understand? You know, God doesn't help those until they help themselves, right? And there goes my daughter making her noises. You know, this is this is a series, and pretty soon our, our other son will be making some noise. Domino effect, right? The life of parenting. So, um, so yeah, we need to be active. We need to be supportive because there's so many elements at play here. It's, it's not just, you know, what you see on the surface that matters. It's all the elements behind, all these different organizations, all striving for a common cause to uplift the black community, to get us unified on so many different levels, economically, you know, socially, you know, even spiritually, philosophically, getting striving hard to get everybody on a common page. And it's, I say a common page because it's going to take a little bit more work to get us on the same page. So common means that we're at least coming together to agree on what we can all agree on without any difficulties, without any any type of hang-ups, you know, because we, we are so full of hang-ups, and it's not entirely our fault. You know, we've been through a lot. We've, you know... Uh, grown up upon different paths, different philosophies, different ideologies, different religious concepts. So we got all of this on our plate, and we we don't want to hate on each other because of that. Because you know some of these things are deeply ingrained, deeply ingrained in each one of us, and you know those elements may not be going away anytime soon. You know, you understand? As hard as we want to chop down many of the religious family or the non-religious family, you know, realize that, you know, that's a that battle's gonna be a longer battle to deal with. The battle at hand right now is the battle of black unification, the black nation building. That's something that's more doable than anything else if we focus our attention on what we have in common there. You understand? What we have in common on that level. And, you know, of course, you know, we're going to have those amongst us who, who are admin about propagating their, 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 their foundation, their way. But I'm simply saying, 
let us, you know, all realize that, you know, especially those amongst us who mean well, who are really about that business, you understand, who are real, who are, who are true to the cause. We don't want to push each other away. We want to unify on common principles that everybody can readily accept without any hassle, without any, any, any complications. You understand? Like one brother said, like the brother said, just be black. You know, that's, that's what, that's, 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 that's gotta be our, our calling card, you know, our banner. Just be black. And, and we build on from there. We move on from there. So we've been reading the destruction of black civilization, you know, after, you know, the pattern that, you know, was, was, was pursued by, uh, brother Grandmaster Jay, who had also been reading it and, uh, was unfortunately apprehended, you know, um, during the course of this at one night or one day, I don't know if it was day or night, I don't remember, but, uh, you know, they basically, uh, intruded into his home and apprehended him. Um, took him into custody at that time. He's, he's, uh, I believe, you know, uh, under a limited, uh, like a form of a house arrest of a sort, uh, where he's got limited, uh, freedoms. Um, one of the limitations is that he's not able to communicate on the social media platforms, unfortunately. And that was one of the, one of the prominent ways that we were able to hear, you know, um, you know, some of the, uh, the insight that was coming from the brother, some of the motivation, uh, for unification. Um, and so, you know, they, you know, made the matter clear of what their agenda was of talking about the, uh, establishment. And that was namely to silence the brother or attempt to silence the brother and, you know, you know, apply upon him bogus charges. So we want to be mindful of that, uh, that, that, that support is needed there. Um, but we don't stop, you know, it's, you understand, you, you might be able to silence one person for a temporary time or however long that may be, but it's, it's a lot harder to silence a million plus people. You understand? They say with 46 million black members in, in blacks in this land alone, let alone worldwide globally. But those of us who are about this cause, about uplifting the black nation, about unifying the black nation, you understand, you know, it's, it's a lot more, more challenging to silence all of us. You understand? So we're going to continue reading anyway. We're going to continue reading that. We're going to continue talking about, you know, what it means to be unified as black people. We're going to keep uniting. We're going to keep on keeping the story going on. You know, our story. You know, so there, there's too many of us for, to, for us to um, bow down and accept the treatment that's being delivered to our brother. We're going to keep on going on. We're going to keep on standing up. We're going to keep on representing the flag that has been raised over the black community. And it's not, it's not the flag of retreat. It's not the flag of, of, of surrender. It's the flag of black unity. You understand? So we don't stop. We're not intending to stop. We're not, we're not quitting. We're not giving up. We haven't fizzled out. We haven't died off. Shalom, good brother. We we haven't um, tapped out. We're still in the match. You understand? You had us, you know, in, in a submission hold for a little bit. You understand? You 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 had your your arm over our mouth, so we couldn't couldn't speak. But um, you understand? We move those arms out of the way. We get the, get those knees off our necks. And we keep on speaking, we keep on moving, we keep on rising. The soldiers keep on marching, fully armed, fully equipped. They keep on representing. The scholars keep on uniting. The scholars keep on building, educating, enlightening. The adepts keep on, the, the uh, spiritual adepts keep on enlightening the family. So, <laughs> you know, this is, this is something you, you, you have to take out the, the whole nation to stop this from happening. And that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You got to take out the whole. I know you're trying with these these bogus uh, diseases and these bogus viruses, trying to keep on getting rid of, trying to find ways to get rid of the black nation. But uh, we're adamant. We're 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 we're, we're uh, driven by a higher uh, concept of self preservation, not just some earthly, worldly self, but but a higher level of uh, sense of being. 
were driven by. You understand? Um, while the people who were wishing we were gone are driven by simply a fleshy sense of um, self-preservation. You know, they just don't want to disappear off of the map. You understand? You know, they don't want to be metamorphosized into <laughs> what's, per what's dominant on the planet, and that's the black genetic. Because they know that the black genetic will dominate all other, you know, any any inferior genes that exist. And over a prolonged period of time, you would have what I call the paint, uh, the paint palette effect, where after enough splashing of all these colors, you've only got one white paint circle on a paint palette. After enough of splashing all of the other paints around, you know, eventually that other paint, that single white paint will vanish because it'll start to get mixed in. It'll start to become um, uh, mixed in with the prominent, the dominant colors and the most dominant on that palette, no matter what, is that black circle. You understand? You can mix all these colors, but the minute you start mixing that black circle, things just start darkening up and there's no turning back from that. You can, there's no, no turning back from that. So, you know, they're fighting a lost cause. They're fighting an inevitable cause. The, the, inevitable, the inevitable is that the way things begin is the way things will end. Whether you like it or not. You didn't begin on the scene. You can expect not to be the those last on the scene. That's just the way it is. It, be, it began with the original black nation. There was nobody else on the planet Earth as far as the human beings of the human beings of our of, of, of our likenesses concerned there were other beings but there were no other of our likenesses on the earth except for the original human and later 60,000 years ago they say it's about you know the, the people who uh, have recorded this for themselves say 60,000 years ago their ancestor known as the Neanderthal showed up and then 6,000 years ago, the uh, the so-called civilized, or the beginning of a so-called civilized um, Caucasian uh, people began to show up. So, you didn't start off. You didn't begin. So, based upon the ancient prophecy, you're not going to be ending anything. You'll be ended yourself. Because... At the end of the day, those who began, these are the ones that are going to close the story on this, in this life on this planet. The way things began on this planet is the way things will end on this planet. The first should be last, the last should be first. You know, you know how all that goes. So we're the last, we're the last nation to go through big, like just trauma. This, indeed, yes, indeed, shalom, black family. The black nation has gone through tremendous trauma, unlike no one else. No one could be compared. Yes, you can have sympathy for the the Jews that died in the Holocaust, the so-called Jews that died in the Holocaust. You know, they say it was about a million or so many, you know, about a million or so. But that doesn't account for the millions and millions of of blacks who've died and continue to be killed continue to die under an oppressive hand you understand under an oppressive uh, uh, program you understand that's a holocaust unlike any that, that that this planet this planet has ever experienced in recorded history you understand has ever experienced we don't have any knowledge of anything prior to that when the um, for one when the blacks were at the height of power and authority, no, you don't find any record of anybody else being uh, uh, massacred, you know, large-scale genocide. You don't find any history in ancient uh, Kemet, in ancient, you know, uh, Nubia, in any of the, the any of the Western uh, uh, African kingdoms. You don't find any recorded history of large-scale genocide against another people. You understand? You know, we find even in some of the stuff we read that, um, you know, our way was to let you go. <laughs> you know, look, we, we're just trying to scare you out of our land. Like, go home. You know, isn't it, isn't your family calling you? Go home. 
You know, what are you doing out here trying to fight? What are you doing? Just go home. Boo. That's what, that's what we, were, we were trying to do. Like, oh, you know. But uh, these people came out here on some, some savage stuff. And they came out of the caves looking around for the next meal. You understand? They were hungry. And we fell for that hunger. We thought, you know, we was going to be chair. Like, oh, you hungry? We got, we can feed you something or whatever. We sitting there thinking that, you know, they they were, you know, utilizing a similar slave system that we were using, for example. You know, and started, you know, thinking, oh, we can make some money off of this. Started hemming each other up in the process, not realizing that we're uh, self-destructing. And here we are, the descendants of that self-destructed state status so now we're you know trying to piece us back together we're trying to piece us back together like the pieces of the body of Asar trying to piece us back together as Set, as Set has broken us up and spread us all across the globe yeah the original people our story's been told in so many ways. You'll find it biblically. You'll find it in the, the, the you know, uh, Metuneter. You'll find it in, in, you know, probably in, in some of the, the, the old uh, sources of the Vedic, you know, the, the Bhagavad Gita. You'll find our story anywhere you look, you know, of what we've been going through and what's what's been prophesied even to happen to us. And even if you don't believe, like if you're not a spiritual person, even science would have told you that this was the the dynamic that things were going to based upon the behaviors that we were having based upon the choices we were making you know we had great leaders who were trying to get us to um, you know reevaluate our situation and move and relocate to refortify ourselves to fortify ourselves you blow them off because we were so we were getting so really superstitious about some things and not able to see uh, the spiritual drive, the spiritual push that was behind these great leaders of our, our ancestors. So now here we are, hopefully there's enough of us that have learned our lesson. Hopefully there's a, more of us that have learned our lesson than those who were still asleep and not able to do anything, and worse, those who have surrendered to the adversary and become mere puppets and coons on their behalf. So hopefully there's enough of us thinking, being conscious, and if we don't even know the scenario, if, let's say you don't even know about your ancestors, hopefully you're conscious enough to know that, hey, something's not right, and there needs to be something done about it, and at the end of the day, I see ones that look like me getting killed. And so I need to stand up for those that look like me and try to stop this uh modern day genocide uh, happening against us and unify even if you don't know anything I know there's some of us that have probably you know hardly read anything about real black history you understand going all the way back you know as far as we can as, as far as we can travel you know you know some of us were just content with you know getting up going to work you know checking in and checking the clock you know checking in there uh, getting your paycheck, coming home, paying your bills, and, and, and that's enough for you, you know. But at, at some point, you know, that sen that spiritual sense of self-preservation kicks in when you start seeing ones that look like you getting killed, and you realize that that could easily be you that gets killed next. So that's why we have to be awake, not just calling ourselves woke, but we have to be awake and. The thing about being awake is that you get inspired, not just to stay awake, but to get up and get out of the bed and go forward and do and move in a way that has a, a, a constructive effect to, to, to resolving our problem, to resolving our conditions. So, you know, that's the angle that we need to be, that's the perspective that we need to keep on our top mental shelf black unity black unity black family you know we gotta stop playing games we gotta stop joking around for ourselves thinking that this is something that'll just pass over we've been pa trying to pass this over for many years now and nothing's passed over yet think about this you know 
It's like every year some new form of, of, of radical extremism, racism happens directed towards us. Some form of tyranny, some form of blatant um, uh, attack towards our people. Somebody saying like, hey, let's make these the first people we, put, we inject this vaccine to uh, and then we'll have an example for everybody else and they'll disguise it behind saying, well, we're doing this because these are the most impoverished people and we care about everybody. Well, start, 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 start by your own kind, because you've got impoverished people under your own kind too. Start there. If it's if you're so caring, why, why do you, why do you have to be admin and and pinpointed in your uh, your direct directing your so-called uh, your venomous vaccine to the people in the motherland? Why is the the black on your map for this miraculous treatment of yours? So, you know, trick no good. You know, we've had plenty, plenty, plenty of examples of um, dealing with you and dealing with your treachery, dealing with your deceit, dealing with your, your trickery, your shenanigans. You understand? We've had enough of all that. That's why, like I said, in the, it, you can look on the, on the, uh, on the IG, uh, my profile, you'll see it. We know who you are. We know who you are. So, trick, trick no good. Those are, that's that's all dry played out. You understand? You know, as as high tech as things are right now, we are fully aware that somehow, some way, if you're involved, if you're involved in it, I don't care if you're a billionaire, if you're involved in it, it's gotta be some scheme to it. It just has to be. And we just have to do the homework to figure out exactly what that scheme is because we know you're trying to get rid of us. We know you don't like us. You, we know that you wanted to somehow uh, subject us to perpetual uh, enslavement in some form or fashion. We know this. We see who you are. So, you know, the, the, the ball is in our court. The ball is in our court right now. For what steps? What steps are taken next? And we know those of us that know full well those necessary steps. There's no other. There's no other uh, uh, option. There's no other. Uh, path here but unification and all that entails you understand all levels of unification that's our only possible solution yeah yeah exactly pretty much you know so you know the the, the folks in, in uh, Barbados and everywhere else they need to stand up they need to stand up and because and, 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 you know when you see an evil you know you just got to stand up you can't you, we got to stop stop being pacifists and, and you know we're not Tibetan monks or something, and even the Tibetan monks aren't pacifists, really, really. You understand? We we are people who need to stand up and you know make our position known, make our stance known, and stand to it and defend that position by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So there's that. So, beloved black family, let's get to the reading at hand. Page 310, chapter 13, The Destruction of Black Civilization. I begin at the top of the page. Out of the stormy past till we now stand at last. Chapter 13, The Black world at the crossroads. One of the most troublesome facts in the study of history over very long periods of times, such as several centuries, is that a truth may slowly emerge period after period until it clearly forms itself into a truth impregnable, a fact nowhere explicitly stated as such in the mass of data covered. As one continues to move on down through the centuries, countless events and situations may continue to make supporting additions to what has already been established as an unsalable fact. Yet, that truth may be so repugnant, so utterly void of any rational or intelligent reason for its existence that hardly any historian would wish to state in, it, in his work, state it in his work. 
Yet I did just that when I wrote that the whites are the implacable foe, the traditional and everlasting enemy of the blacks. The compelling reason for publicly putting this declaration in its historical context is clear. The necessary re-education of blacks and a possible solution of racial crises can begin, strangely enough, only when blacks fully realize this central fact in their lives. The white man is their bitter enemy. For this is not the ranting of wide-eyed militancy, but the calm unmistakable verdict of several thousand years of documented history. Even the sample case study of ten black states in this work shows that each and every one of those states was destroyed by whites. Facing this reality, facing this reality does not call for increasing hatred or screaming in utterly futile denunciations. Far from it. For all, the, all these shouting emotional uh, outbursts by blacks are in themselves indications of weakness because they becloud the mind and prevent the calm and clear thinking that is absolutely required for planning if the race is to be saved from final destruction. Yes, indeed. Peace be with you, black family. Destruction is not too strong a term here. Only fools would be unable to see that the race is again being hemmed in, surrounded by its enemies, and cannot survive forever under, the, under what might be called a state of gradual siege. Those Negroes who are still pleading with the whites for brotherhood through integration are so deaf and blind that they are unable to get the white enemies reply to these, to these frantic pleas for acceptance through integration. The reply of whites was so loud and clear that it, it was heard around the world. When segregation in schools and residences was outlawed through the, throughout the United States, whites fled from the cities to the suburbs just as though a plague had struck or some deadly disease was spreading. The blacks were left alone in the cities, now called ghettos or the inner cities. This was rejection, total complete. The black youth of America got this message from the whites first, and they got it quickly. They formed new battle lines. Several millions of middle class Negroes and their leaders have not received the message yet, and probably never will. For them, the white man is the ship, and all else is the sea. They themselves do not feel competent to develop the highest standard of life in the all black communities created by the very whites they so much worship. For them, there can be no quality education unless by hook or crook some white faces, any kind of white faces, are in the classroom. Their main drive is to force the fleeing whites to accept them or please, O oh you superior people, allow us to be bus allow us to bus some of our children to your schools. As they achieve these hollow victories on the integration front, they add a new cry. Give us racial balance. These Negroes have neither the ethnic pride nor the self-respect that is so characteristic of the American Indians, Japanese, and Chinese, and they seem utterly insensitive to, to begin openly reject... To, to, ah, let's say that one again, shall we? These Negroes have have neither the ethnic pride nor the self-respect that is so characteristic of the American Indians, Japanese, and Chinese, and they seem utterly insensitive to being openly rejected by the whites in battle on with the fantastic idea that they can force the whites to accept them socially. One major reason why young black Americans understood the white position so quickly was that by some happy circumstance in history, they were more closely attuned to the great common people and therefore shared their common aspirations and common sense. And common sense. No one has to tell them that there can no longer, no one has to tell them that there can be no bigger farce than integration of hatred and oppressed blacks with the very white enemies who oppress them. 
both the farce of integration and the everlasting white enemy are regularly highlighted in the world's press race riots in the integrated u.s armies in europe and even at war in indochina race riots in camps in usa race riots on battleships of integrated u.s navy and in short open combat between blacks and whites when they are forced together as equals these there is peace and harmony of course when the blacks humbly stay in their place their subordinate place using the courts to force whites to accept blacks as equals is quite futile even when and if all the thousands of courts battle court battles are won white american White America is overwhelmingly against integration, and white Americans are no different than other whites throughout the world. The only instances in, the hist in their history when integration was welcomed were when the outcome would put them in a more dominating position or one of personal security, money, and a prestige they could never otherwise achieve. Hence, because of the high premium many Negroes give to a white skin, the most ordinary whites will eagerly marry any black star or any other blacks if they have money. But in no period in history, and this point is important, have the masses of blacks sought integration and general amalgamation with the whites. During all of their trivials, uh, their pride in race was steadfast. Much of the so-called self-hatred actually reflects a sense of futility and despair over lack of leadership and unity for action. They, the black masses, rejected general integration as a movement to obliterate the black race as such. The black masses still reject it. I have pointed out blind, alley, blind alleys into which we are being led by leaders whose aims and objectives are quite personal and not those of the black masses. Footnote. No one should presume to say with the, to say what atti no one should presume to say what the attitude of any large group of people is without learning what it is di directly from them directly from the people concerned. Our study of viewpoints began in 1955. The survey started at Tuskegee with 52 school supervisors, principals, teachers, and graduate students from 12 states. They were to conduct polls from time to time in their respective states over a period of years. No, for no formalities, no rush, just two simple questions. Do you want to integrate? Why? For either yes or no. Uh, in the footnote. Uh, let's see here. Lost that little. Oh, there we go. These black masses demand absolute equality on all fronts. Precisely the same rights, privileges, and responsibilities as all other citizens and without any exceptions whatsoever. This obviously includes the, the right of every individual to attend the school or college of his choice, rent or buy a home wherever he pleases, marry whom he pleases, white or black, and to freely use all places of public accommodation, all of which is a far, far cry from the doctrine that all of this must necessarily include a white presence to be valid, or a mass movement by the race toward amalgamation. The presence of whites in any given situation should be incidental if considered at all. What the Negroes referred to above seems what the Negro refers to above seems incapable of grasping is the difference between a good school and a white school, a good community and a good community in which to live and a white community. To them, they are necessarily the same. Continuing evidence of the Caucasian success in capturing the minds of blacks. Hmm. The Motherland at the Crossroads. The problem is essentially the same in our African homeland. There, too, white is still the standard of excellence of what is right, wise, and best. 
I personally know a number of African pres uh, presidents and ministers who will not dare uh, to make important decisions without the guidance of white advisors, men who often know far less about the questions at hand than the presidents and their ministers, but they all feel the need for a white seal of, of approval. The blacks, therefore, still have a long way to go in order to achieve absolute equality as free men among free men. They have a long way to go in the United States and the numerous other areas in which they live all over the world. In Africa, at this writing, Tanzania leads in the first hard-headed, masses-orientated social economic program that is expressly designed to raise the level of life of the whole people, beginning with those lowest down. It is a truly African program drawing heavily on African cultural traditions. It was from its very inception too much for those of the elite who think of independence as a mere transfer of power from a white ruling class to a black ruling upper class, leaving the masses no better off than they had been under colonialism. These are the kind of smug and cocksure leaders who are preparing for ground, not military coups, but mass uprisings such as as Africa has not yet witnessed. The first line of action should center around the study of and development of nationwide people-involved self-help cooperative programs, village by village, town by town, and block by block. Each community would do its own development planning the government's principal role being to provide advisors, training, technical assistance, and loans when and wherever these are needed. For people with little or no money, barter and exchange are the first steps toward economic salvation, the basis for capital formation. Increased food production should be seen as for both wealth and health. The main emphasis would be inter-community relations between the various language groups in all development programs. This means agreement plans for each area to specialize in producing goods needed but not produced in the other regions. This is the direct route to national unity through cooperation in order to reach the goals desired in common but in common by all language groups in an African state. Go upstairs. Continuing, this calls for thinking, planning, and hard work. <laughs> yep. Now, it is just here within the race where integration is not only needed, but it is mandatory. We shall remain a weak people until we begin to drive for integration of blacks, first of all, instead of battling to integrate with other peoples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the daily hustle and bustle of family life. Um, so, continuing, the second great task of government calls for furthering the home front economic development by aggressively working for African economic unity on a scale never before attempted. Interstate trade and other economic programs designed to deal with Asia and Europe must begin with unity of action in Africa itself region by region and then enter regional and continental efforts. If black Africa is ever to be is ever to free itself from the present economic morass nor will we be able to cover our failures by endlessly swearing and fumbling over South Africa. Black Africa can never deal effectively with white ruled areas until it deals with black Africa itself. First, the foundation for everything we do or wish to do is economic, a word that simply means wealth enough to be really independent and having the means to do what must be done. Shalom, uh, beloved uh, black family showing up here. 
If we do not notice that every one of the great black nations studied rose as the result of a variety of wealth producing activities which enabled them to achieve set goals, if we miss this fact, then we miss the most important lesson they left us in this book. Another significant fact was the widespread trade between the early African states. Somehow, they overrode the communications barriers about which we now hear so much. The crime first need throughout the African world, however, it dedicated, it dedicated, however, is dedicated leaders. Well, I think that's a typo here. Let me look at that. The crying first need throughout the African world, however, is dedicated leaders, not just office holding bureaucrats, but men and women leaders who will be more and more in the field among the people and less and less preoccupied in offices with paperwork. These will be people on a mission to improve the lives of the people rather than enriching themselves. Meanwhile, a frustrated people send up a silent prayer, often heavy with tears. Please, O oh God, send us a few real leaders, just a few, Lord. wanted leaders and an African ideology <laughs> the black people of the world have therefore come at last to destiny's crossroads they must make some fundamental decisions as a single people the one hopeful sign is that they are slowly and painfully coming to their hitherto beclouded senses, coming to realize that they are one people with a common destiny and that, no matter how scattered over the world, the treatment suffered by one black group is suffered by all. But there is a terrible crisis of leadership at the crossroads. There is no united leadership group or any real effort to create one. The great difficulty is that black leaders, again, unlike the Jews, do not know what their own heritage is. They are almost wholly ignorant of their own cultural uh, source from which it, independence, original thinking springs, and progress is inspired. The Negro leaders, who spearhead and carry on the, the campaigns for integration, amalgamation begin, being the aim, not only do not know the great heritage of the blacks, they do not want to know it. They wish to draw on the Caucasian heritage and become identified with it. They are totally rejected by the whites, but no matter, they keep on trying because the white liberals do encourage them to hope by mixing with them from time to time. Other leaders equally ignorant of their heritage simply do not know which way to lead. They too feel compelled to adopt and follow Caucasian ideologies because they do not feel free, equal, or competent enough to develop an ideology of their own. An African-oriented ideology. Hence, many including some black youth leaders from whom so much was expected are jumping out of white capitalistic democracy frying pan straight into white communism's fire. Neither system was designed for the black world, yet each is only too anxious to use the blacks as they have always been used, a numerical power base for white rule. Moreover, the capitalistic version of democracy and the Soviet version of communism not only could not serve the interests and aspirations of the black masses, but they do not serve the interests of the white masses, neither of them. Neither of them. Of course, there would be a much larger class and a more powerful class of black uh, commissars and black cent central committees if communism should spread over the black world and more black capitalists if capitalism becomes the prevailing way of life. In each case we have not a theory or a speculation but a plain operating fact that even a fool can see. 
Both capitalism and communism have ruling classes that suppress and exploit the people. The masses of people, like so many masses of puppets, are fed and filled with the ideals and principles of both systems. For these, they fight and die, screaming these ideals as though they were drugged. Voting creates an illusion of power that does not exist in fact. It works wonderfully well for the rulers, the real decision makers, because the people in the capitalistic democracies actually believe they are deciding and running things. One surprising difference between capitalistic and communistic countries is that the people in the latter countries know they are powerless. Peace be with you, black family. Welcome. When the United States assumed the leadership role of holding the line of white Western power throughout the world, Russia took over a similar role of the white East European states. The hammer and sickle flag is different than the stars and stripes, but each now represents the same objective. Communism seeks to bring the various people of the world under the white supremacy of white communist states under Russian domination. Our capitalistic democracy aims at doing the same thing white rule under American domination, hence the Cold War, which was nothing, which has nothing to do with communism itself. The so-called Cold War is, in fact, a contest between two of the strongest white powers for world domination. Because communism is not the real issue, as capitalism is not the real issue on the communist side, the United States will form alliances and give all-out aid and support to a communist country just as quickly, some say more quickly, as to a non-communist country, anything to weaken, non, to weaken not communism, but Russia, the chief white challenge for world rule. As between these two giants, the choice of the blacks can only be a choice between two groups of white masters, although the yoke and shackles of one are attractively painted red. Nor will the blacks find their salvation in Mao's China or, or any third world in which they will still be in a subordinate position. To be equal, they must first stand on their own feet. In this capitalist in this capitalism versus communism connection, the immediate trouble confronting the blacks is that so many millions of them have been made to wholly, made so wholly dependent on the white race for so many generations that they have become mentally lazy. For these, dependence has become comfortable. It frees them from the initiative, re, initiative responsibility and planning required of independent free men and women. Leave it to the white folks has become their unspoken creed. They have not yet come to realize that this attitude of dependence by so many is responsible for the whole race being characterized as children and men being called boys. To be recognized as men they seem not to know, they must aggressively assume the real role of, a, of men. And this is why so many black leaders expect the solution to the so-called race problem to be handed to them on, a silver plat on, sil on the silver platters of white ideologies. Th this excuses them from both the mental task of working out their own and the labor required for actually carrying through a united action program, first nationwide and then worldwide. It is needless to say what elementary common sense dictates, which is that when the African people achieve enough unity to develop the ideolo ideological guidelines for their own advancement, they will draw what is best for them from any or all existing systems as a matter, as a simple matter of course. For whatever an African organ, whatever an African organized way of life might be, they would not hesitate any more than Stalin and the Soviet leaders when they brought in capitalists from the United States, Germany, and England not to adopt capitalism, but to learn those capitalistic skills, techniques, and methods which would be useful in building a great Soviet Union. The emerging communist states 
drew heavily on capitalism when it served their purpose, openly and without apology. Hence, they became equal with the great, greatest powers without changing their own ideology. These observations are addressed only to those who seem not to know that one may extract what he needs from capitalism and communism without becoming capitalist or communist. The Black Unity Threat No one seems to have noticed or understood the signals from the white world, signals which tell how tremendously important the whites regard any movement toward unity among the blacks. Nothing racial seems to upset them more. That is why they insist on being in on any black organizational movement, either as financially supporting members or as advisors, observers, or reporters. To bar them from any exclusively all-black conference is regarded as something a little less than treason or as some kind of black conspiracy in the making. On the other hand, no blacks are ever present at all-white conferences where the fate of blacks everywhere is discussed and decided. Unity among blacks has been prevented for so many centuries that the various mechanisms to keep blacks disorganized have been perfected in the western system of race control. The white man is keenly aware of the tremendous power of any well-organized group, any well-organized groups. But an organization of blacks on a scope that would represent the voice of black America would be a threat and a challenge not only to continued white domination of blacks in the United States, but also foreign policies and practices that affect the lives of African people elsewhere over the world. But the apprehension of whites about the possibility of real black unity appears to be quite as needless now as in the past. For we are still in the meeting and talking stage of our history and appear not to be ready to ready even to begin the attack on the obviously built-in obstacles. These have been pointed out over and over again in this study. They had to be emphasized and could not possibly be overemphasized because in addition to the historic reasons for our own self-generated disunity, no other non-white people on earth are in the dangerous situation of having so many of their leaders selected, appointed, sponsored, or financed by the white ruling classes. In the case of blacks in the United States, and the same is true of blacks elsewhere, these Negro heads of important institutions and organizations represent the white men's indirect rule over the black community. It is the voice of these leaders that is accepted as the voice of the races. They do indeed have a great following, drawn almost entirely from the traditional Negro elite or upper middle class, lawyers, government officials, doctors, professors, school administrators, scientists, engineers, head of integrationist organizations, etc. They are essentially anti-black, anti-African, and therefore anti-black studies. Hence, their, fran their frantic drive for integration, which of course will effectively check the alarming development of pride in race, a sense of cultural identity with one's own bloodline, and a growing knowledge of being members of a race with a record of achievements unsurpassed by any other people, despite the conversion of so much that was black to white. This, the Negro leadership, would destroy even at the inception by forcing the black youth of America more directly under white education, direction, and control, a vengeful striking back at black youth for starting a revolt against their mental enslavement in the first place. In a panel discussion with three other university presidents, the head of one major white university said, Integration is a very misleading term. Our black students are as separate from the white students as they are in the general society, and they know it. 
they come because of the vast number of special scholarships offered to them. This is a wise program from our viewpoint, from our point of view. It brings more of the future black leaders into a more traditionally American environment. We are not disturbed by their demand for black studies, for these, of course, will be gradually phased out as their emotions cool. That same month, May 1971, a Negro professor declared, Black studies are ridiculous in any university. I am not black and I will not join in this new hypocrisy. I am a Negro, yet outside of the United States I am considered white. On a recent TV program, the head of a militant, militant black movement went even further. In response to a question, he said, Look at me. I am neither black, Negro, nor African. I am a Moor. My roots are in Asia. He was born in Mississippi. But, the moderator press, you call your movement a black movement. Ah, the great Moorish leader replied, that's strategy. Apparently satisfied that the black masses did not hear him, or if they did, would not understand. Quite relevant to all of this, I have made several points above. One was that, notwithstanding the white man's well-developed system of maintaining disunity within the African race, he is still disturbed by any signs of a movement towards unity among blacks, and goes into action in many subtle ways to, to offset it. The important point is the most disheartening. This is the fact that the white man really has nothing to fear from any effect, effective unity among blacks for a long, long time because he himself installs and backs most of the key leaders of the race, two of which I have just quoted above, and the number is legion. We still have in the closing years of the 20th century, therefore, exactly the same unique problem that confronted Africans in Egypt over 6,000 years ago. And we challenge any student of history to point out any other people who are in, who are or have been saddled with a perpetually disunifying and progress checking problem of this magnitude. For a while, the white man has mingled his blood with non-white peoples from times immemorial. In no other people was the outcome a hostile race within a race. No other non-white people with Caucasian blood, whether Indian, Japanese, or Chinese, feel any compelling reason for integration, a cold word for amalgamation, with the whites. Quite the contrary, they resist it as a policy or an acceptable general practice. The only hope for this the only hope for the kind of racial unity that will really liberate the blacks in America and command the respect of the world will be a new kind of mass organization on a scale with an action program never before attempted. This will require a new kind of leadership, a leadership with the single purpose of helping the masses up towards a better life. We, know, we are noted for our countless organizations, large and small, each is an independent kingdom struggling to become an empire under a great chief. This is inevitable in the circumstances, but as the history of Africa, not one of these standing alone can meet the mounting crisis of the race. If they will not unite, the race need not, to not continue in despair because of the unyielding pride of individual leaders. A people's mass organization movement can override all obstacles, but will this be done? The, subtle, the, the subtitle of this book, Great Issues of a Race from 4500 BC to 2000 AD, has puzzled some readers. 2000 AD, that is the end of the century, and we are not there yet. This subtitle, however, not only reflects the author's conviction that the main obstacles which confront us in the past are with us today, will still be with us in the year 2000 and after, but also that for the rest of this century, it is very likely that the blacks will still be meeting, listening to, and applauding fiery, soul-stirring speeches protesting and denouncing injustice or happily replying on politics as the ultimate solution of our problems. The frustrations 
confusion of goals, and a sense of helplessness are likely to continue into the next century. What black youth begin what black youth began as the foundation for a new and mighty advance may be and indeed is being defeated. But whether the task of what must be done is undertaken by this generation or left to the next, one thing is certain, it can never be said again that the black race does not know exactly what to do or that not a single member of the race ever carefully studied and then presented a comprehensive plan as one way out. For the final pages of this work offer such a plan. It is not the plan, but a plan, a comprehensive basis for beginning and improving, but beginning. And that, beloved black family, is the end of chapter 13. The next time we continue reading God So Willing, we will be picking up at chapter 14, Organizing a Race for Action, that's on page 321. I remind you to be active in your support in the cause in every way that you can. That includes, that includes our very own social media platform, souljourneyoflife.org. Sign up, join today, and offer your support. There are three possible ways that this can be done you can use cash app the cash app um, is the light dome you can use paypal the paypal is paypal.me forward slash soul journey of life or you can log into your soul journey of life account and look to the left and you will see on the panel support the cause Click that and you can be get guided to uh, the instructions on how to use that. And I pray that uh, we have benefited and that we are ever, ever more inspired to be united as a people. That we're ever more inspired to pick up this banner, to pick up the tools, to pick up the burden of what makes black unity possible. And that we are taking this seriously. That this isn't just another moment where we're hyped up with a favor for black unity only in spoken word, but also in physical action and intellectual thought. All these combined and leave you me, we become an unstoppable force, a force to be reckoned with. We have to come at this with such a forceful drive. That it's not enough just to take one of us and silence us or kill one of us or, or lock up one of us or exile one of us. But you've got millions of people. We need it where one million strong, armed, one million strong, unarmed, come at such a position, such create such an impact that we overwhelm any possible opposition towards black unity. You understand? That's the type of impact that has to happen. We have to overwhelm any potential possibility to disrupt black unity. You understand? We have to have we have to make sure that our allegiance to black leadership, to strong black leadership, black leadership that has a plan, that has a blueprint, that has a clear clear cut objective, that that has unifying principles. General, general unifying principles and that we support said leadership 100% no questions, no if, answer, buts no nothing, 100% staying on code so that when we're all so strongly staying on code you can't break this no matter what you do, you would have to annihilate the whole population of a million to get this thing to stop running and if you were to do that, then the hand of tyranny would be so clearly exposed that it wouldn't be a question to anybody else on the planet earth that hey this is an enemy to anybody that wants to unify and be independent of their oppression so this is we, we have we have we have our work cut out for us join soul journey of life and also I want to reiterate those that have products that have business that that are vendors to sign up a vendor's account at Soul Journey of Life and set up your shop there. Um, all the tools are there for you to do it. All the features are there for you to do it. 
um, and, 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 and and help yourself. And if you have any questions, of course, you can go ahead and message Soul Journey of Life, and I'll be glad to help you in any way that I can. Um, let us be mindful. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Two million, three million, four million, five million. You understand this? 46, 48 million of us in this land, 48 million strong. What are you going to do when 48 million of us unite? You understand? That's being optimistic, of course. But if we even had a, a, a this, if, 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 if even 5% of that, 25% of that, if, you know, what are you going to do? The only thing you could do is either deal with us or leave us alone. Leave us alone. Yeah, that's going to be beautiful. One million strong. I advise you, by the way, while we're while we're going. I'm, in fact, I'm gonna leave out with the song just so we can have this on our mind. But you guys can play this on YouTube. Go ahead and go to YouTube. Uh, Soul Journey of Life is the is the channel. Soul Journey of Life, the Light Dome is the channel, and just go ahead and uh, play one good time. One million strong. I'm gonna leave out with that. I'm leave out with one million strong just to motivate us on what we are capable of what we are capable of I believe in us you have to believe in us we have to believe in we you understand we have to believe in us and nobody else it doesn't matter who if, if, even if we have allies so called external allies who say well we believe in you we're on your side we're on your team never mind that nice to know you here's my autograph you know, take the fanfare, fanfare elsewhere, but right now, this is about us, this is about our people, and this is about us standing up on our own two feet, based upon our own support, you understand, based upon our own resources, based upon our own tech, our own intellectual capacity, our own physical capacity, our own might, our own consciousness, our own, you understand, there's a lot of things that have to be revived out of all of this. We have to really dig deep in the, and reevaluate and make sure that what's coming out of this is genuinely from us. Genuinely from us and about us, by us, for us. Without any uh, hidden gimmicks, any hypocrisy, any laziness, no cowardliness, none of that can exist here. You understand? We understand that there's those of us that are mightier than others, those that are more meek. But the mighty help the meek. The meek, you know, find what you know, find a way to stand up. You understand? God doesn't help those until they help themselves. That's what you know. Some some of the texts say in some uh, uh, religious sources. So that's that's what we need to be looking at. That's that's that needs to be our primary focus for black unification. What's important to black unification? What do we need? What is our plan? You understand? And as I keep on emphasizing, we need to do active things. Physically, mentally, spiritually active things. Join Soul Journey of Life. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge the black family. If you are about that business, Soul Journey of Life is a conscious black social media platform. What are you waiting for? If you haven't joined it yet, what are you waiting for? What's going on? What's the delay? Why are you still so in love with Facebook? Why are you still so in love with Twitter and everything else? L just stop what you're doing. Set up an account right now. Give your support right now. If it's not meeting the standards quality-wise that you want, support it so that we can advance and that we can upgrade. But that's not going to happen without black support. You understand? It's not going to happen any other, any other way. Come to Soul Journey of Life and let us let us breathe life into our own uh, conscious social media platform. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Let us make it happen. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? We have to be 100. We want, you know, just like the brother said, just put there, we have to be 100. Or get left behind. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, rock our minds a little bit. You know. With, 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 with what should be at the top of the charts right now though it's only got 550 views 41 likes it should have 1 million strong likes but uh, you know we, we, we're working our way up we work, we're, we're you know step at a time step at a time 
Yes, indeed. And for all those who have joined the forces of Soul Journey of Life as their conscious social media platform, yeah, definitely, definitely salute to those. You understand? Keep the music going. Keep the keep 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 the uh, the, the propagation going. Let's make this happen. Let's make this uh, a, a, a reality. We need to come together intellectually, and that's what Soul Journey of Life is all about. Black Think Tank. We need to do this. We need to get on the same page. You understand? We need to be able to have brothers and sisters where we can talk in a way where we can meet eye to eye and come at things where we all commonly agree upon economically, uh, technologically, you know, scholastically. We, we Like one brother uh, put in my inbox, we need our own books, our own education books, our own, cri our own, our own education criteria. We need our own um, history lessons. All these things. We need to be scholars. We need to be writing. You understand? Soldiers, we need to be marching. Everybody, we need to be playing our part. And as I said, we need to do active things. I'm, I'm challenging us. I'm putting the challenge out there. We, we, Our ancestors built a pyramid before. <laughs> Why don't we build, build one again? Just because we can. Just because we can. Re manifesting the sense of what we've been through as a people. Why don't we gather again? You understand? If we're not able to march, you know, uh, 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 in some of the ways that, that we have previously, for whatever the reason, we can march and support a black-owned restaurant somewhere. We can show up and support a black-owned business somewhere in mass. I'm not talking about a few here and there. Let's get the, that same three million that marched in, in, in uh, Georgia supporting one of these black-owned business, re black-owned restaurants. Let's get the same thing happening. So, that's the mentality that we have to have. Yes, it does take time, but we have to have, we have, you know, there's, there's things that we can do that drive it in. That when people, when family sees this happening, when the family sees this happening, they get more motivated. They get more inspired. They say, oh, well, not only are we marching armed, but we're also rolling up with the same numbers supporting black owned businesses. We're also rolling up with the same number supporting black communities. Cleaning the communities up. Imagine those same 400, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5, million, whatever, going through whole neighborhoods, cleaning it up. Cleaning it up. You understand? Wherever there's a poor man, a poor woman, boom. Imagine a million doing that. Imagine a million cleaning our own stuff up. Cleaning our own stuff up, cleaning us up. Black doctors, black nurses, you know, rolling along with us. Yeah, vision, vision, black family. The whole nine yards. You think any sector, you know? Imagine a, 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 a um, microchips or chip boards, motherboards, system boards, designed by black-owned businesses. Well, we don't have to. We don't. We don't need part. We got a lot, all the resources. The same, you know, those resources that make a lot of the chipboards. You know where the, the resources come from. <laughs> you already know. It's where anything comes from. Wherever they, whenever they want to take anything, they, they predominantly go to one location, the motherland. So you know, we tap into the same resources, create our own, our own platforms, our own, our own. Uh, uh, um, gaming PCs, office PCs. That's what I do. I create, I, I, I build uh, gaming PCs as well, as well as everything else. You guys already know that I fix and repair servers and all that. You see the video I posted up uh, recently. So yeah, it's all there. It's all there. It's all ready for. I mean, this is opportunity knocking loud. If ever there was opportunity knocking at all, you understand? We just have to see it. Let me go ahead and rock us out with this this uh, joint right here. One million strong by me, Quest Man, of course. Soul Journey of Life. Org. Published this year. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, give you some little a little bit of volume here with this matter. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and check it out. Stay tuned for some other joints coming up coming up soon. Join Soul Journey of Life.org. 